Hello, this is module 21, Trade Secrets, Conditions of Protection. The aim of this module is to explain the principles and concepts of trade secrets law. As there are relatively few cases in connection with trade secrets law in India, and because trade secrets law is judged through the principles of common law, this module will also examine cases and relevant principles from other common law jurisdictions such as the United Kingdom and the United States of America. A trade secret is one which may be used in one's business which could give a person an advantage over its competitors who do not know how to use it. Thus, the cost of devising the trade secret and the inherent value of the trade secret are the underlying reasons that the law operates to protect the holder of the secret. In general, a competitive advantage is only of conferred upon the holder of intellectual property in exchange for transparency and disclosure. This is most clearly seen in the context of other intellectual property laws such as patents where disclosure is rewarded with patent protection. However, unlike other forms of intellectual property rights, the law only protects trade secrets when it remains, as the name suggests, a secret. Thus, a trade secret is any information that can be used in the operation of a business or other enterprise that is sufficiently valuable and secret to afford an actual or potential economic advantage over others. Trade secrets laws operate once a trade secret has been lawfully, unlawfully disclosed. Unlike most other forms of intellectual property rights in India, trade secrets law is not codified but is protected by the principles of common law. Indian courts have therefore relied on common law cases and principles in its own decisions on trade secrets. In the United Kingdom, the seminal case that discusses the elements of a trade secret is Coco v. A. N. Clark. In that case, the court held that to be considered a trade secret, the information must have the necessary quality of confidence about it. It must have been imparted in circumstances imparting an obligation of confidence. It must be an unauthorized use of that information to the detriment of the party communicating it. This precedent and other relevant principles taken together form the basis of the jurisprudence for, of trade secrets law in India. We will now discuss the various elements of trade secrets law. The first element is that subject matter must be confidential. In India, courts have interpreted confidential information in a manner similar to the interpretation in the United Kingdom. In the UK, the leading case is Saltman Engineering vs Campbell Engineering, which holds for information to be confidential, it must have the necessary quality of confidence about it. Namely, it must not be something which is public property and public knowledge. The standard for information to qualify as being trade secrets by the courts in the United States, however, is lower than its UK counterpart. In the United States, the courts do not require absolute secrecy. In the United States, the test is one of reasonableness. Has the plaintiff taken all the reasonable steps considering the nature of the information sought to be protected as well as the conduct of the parties? Where information has been condensed into tangible form, it is always much easier to identify the subject matter sought to be protected as a trade secret. However, where the information sought to be protected is an idea, Proving that the disclosure of such information carrying an obligation of confidence becomes more difficult. In India, the emphasis in this respect is on the form and degree of development of the information or idea. In Anil Gupta vs Kunal Das Gupta, the Delhi High Court observed, when an idea, concept or a theme is original, laws must ensure that such like people are rewarded for their labour. Using this rationale, the court in this case protected a concept for a reality television show as a trade secret. Thus, the subject matter of a trade secret need not be in its final or even tangible form to receive protection under trade secrets law. We will now discuss the second element, the existence of a confidential relationship. A confidential relationship must exist for the information to continue to be regarded as a trade secret. In other words, common law jurisdictions have held that the information will remain a trade secret despite disclosure if such disclosure was made under limited and necessary circumstances. Such confidential relationship may be formed either expressly or impliedly. We will now discuss the various sorts of disclosures. Limited disclosures. 
In the United States case of Metallurgical Industries versus Fortech, the court explained that disclosures may, no, may, be, may not be construed as destroying the secrecy of information as long as the holder of such information can present evidence such as the information was disclosed only to businesses with whom it was dealing and not via a public announcement or to further the entity's economic interests. The court also stated that evidence of confidential relationships with these two companies would help strengthen the limited nature of such disclosure. Indian courts have recognized another form of such limited but permi permitted disclosure in cases where courts have ordered documents to be placed under seal or designate specific persons as a part of a confidentiality club. This enables not just the lawyers but also the courts to function efficiently and comprehensively when adjudicating a case in which the underlying disputed subject matter or incidental data disclosed is confidential. We will now discuss permissive reliance of confidential information. In certain situations, persons can use information deemed to be confidential even if there was no specific authorization granted by the trade secret holder for such use. This permissive reliance on confidential information holds a special place in the realm of data exclusivity. Data exclusivity or exclusivity of registration data is the period of non-reliance or non-disclosure that is provided to new chemical entities, pharmaceutical compositions and agrochemical registration data or test data. Since India does not have a statute that protects such data for a specified period of time, inventors rely on common law principles under trade secrets law. In the case in Ray Smith Klein and French lab, uh, labs, the United Kingdom held that confidential test data regarding safety efficacy and quality of the medicinal product for the grant of marketing license can be used by the licensing authority in the discharge of its duties. The court held that the licensing authority can use such confidential information as long as it is under the authority of the statute and foremost it is in the interest of the public. Thus, public interest would enable Indian courts and adjudic adjudicatory bodies to rely upon the permissive reliance standard in carrying out their functions comprehensively and efficiently. Now, we will come to the most litigated part of trade secrets law, obligation of confidence through employment. A covenant not to compete or a non-disclosure clause in a contract of employment, which are provisions routinely executed in the course of business, are forms of agreements that may carry an obligation of confidence. A non-disclosure clause during the course of employment has been upheld to be valid. However, after the employment concludes, the validity of a non-disclosure clause or a covenant not to compete has been questioned before the Indian courts as a restraint of trade under Section 27 of the Indian Contracts Act. While courts in India have not yet set a precedent on post-employment confidentiality obligations, there could be cases where a restraint reasonably limited by time geographic area, etc., could be held to be valid. Protection of an idea. This is important because courts in a common law system are often faced with the question of whether an idea, which is not yet concrete, ought to be protected. And to this end, they have examined the relationship between the parties as either an implied contract or a quasi-contract. Under an implied contract, Usually, a person does not stop another person with the idea from disclosing it to him. Under a quasi-contract, a person using an idea is unduly enriched or the idea is thrust upon a person when such trade secret is disclosed. Indian courts have ruled that it is necessary to examine the concreteness and novelty of the idea to determine the existence of a confidential relationship. Element 3 is the unauthorized use of confidential information. Infringement of a trade secret can be in two specific forms, misappropriation of a trade secret and its variants and a breach of confidence. Misappropriation of a trade secret is where the trade secret has been wrongfully acquired by a third party. One example of trade secret misappropriation 
is the famous case in the United States of E.I. DuPont versus Christopher. In this case, DuPont alleged that the defendants misappropriated its trade secret for a process of making methanol by flying over its factories and taking photographs that would enable a skilled person to deduce the process. The court in this case held that a trade secret holder is only required to take reasonable precautions and that misappropriation of such trade secret occurs when there is an unlawful taking of a trade secret without expending any effort by techniques such as reverse engineering or independent research. Next, breach of confidence. In relation to a breach of confidence, the trade secret holder is required to have either expressly or impliedly disclosed the trade secret to a third person. Where the use of a trade secret by a third party is beyond the scope of the authorization granted, such act by third par uh, the third party is also considered a breach of confidence. A breach of confidence claim may arise either from an express or implied relationship of confidence between the parties. There are several remedies available to a trade secret holder depending on the nature of infringement. Where the infringement is in the nature of misappropriation, the trade secret holder can seek both civil and criminal remedies. However, where the infringement is in the nature of a breach of confidence, only civil remedies are available to the trade secret holder. Under criminal law, the trade secret holder may file a case for theft, trespass and cheating where there is misappropriation of a trade secret. Under civil law, a person whose trade secret has been misappropriated or there has been a breach of confidence can seek a permanent injunction restraining the infringer and any unauthorized beneficiaries from using the trade secret, a direction from the court for delivery up of all the confidential information where possible, and third, compensation or damages for losses suffered due to disclosure of trade secrets. This chapter aimed to provide an overview of the basic principles of trade secrets law and the application of those principles. The situation may change if and when India decides to enact the National Innovation Bill, which codifies the standards for disclosure and protection of the trade secrets. Until then, information is protected as a trade secret between parties in line with principles of common law and precedent.